anybody believe that the blessing is on you? Put your hands on it. Come on. Clap, clap. saints of God. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Y'all see a glow on my face? And a hat on my head? Where'd that come from? Take this hat, man. I I forgot it was on. Well, anyway, it's a glow on my face because I got my family here today. You know, two weeks ago was Family and Friends Day, right? And uh, 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 they had asked for for my family to be here to help with the Sabbath song. And they couldn't be here then. So it was just me and my wife. Y'all remember me and my wife were standing up here? Well, now my family's here. So guess what? My family, y'all, y'all remember when Ashton used to come up here and help me with the, fam- with the Sabbath song? Y'all remember that? Well, they're here today. And I'm going to ask them to come on up here and this morning and, and join me. And, and the praise team as we sing the Sabbath song this morning. Is that all right? Is that all right? Hey, Amen. Y'all come on up, family. Amen. <laughs> They're here today, so so I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take advantage of this opportunity. Amen. Y'all know it's a blessed day, right? Did he wake you up this morning? I got I got Ashton here. I got my daughter Tanil. I got my grandson Weston. I got my daughter Ivor. I got my grandson. What's your name, Kim? And I got my son-in-law, whatever his name is. Will. Oh, Will. Yeah. Okay. Good. And uh, is there a future in the, in the house somewhere? Uh, there's a boyfriend anywhere. Anyway. Anyway, God is good. God is good, and we're just so happy to be here this morning. You know, we are so blessed. God woke us up and touched us with his finger of love this morning, and he allowed us to be in the house of prayer. How many more times? Just one more time. That's all we want, just one more time, amen. So would you stand this morning and join us as we sing and let God know how much we appreciate the fact that he has allowed us to be in his house just one more time, amen. Come on, everybody. Say it's a blessed day. It's a blessed day. It's a day of rest. It's a day of rest. It's a happy day. It's a happy day. It's a day of, to celebrate. It was made for man. Oh, 
this Sabbath day. Lord, I thank you for my family. I thank you for this Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. everyone. Um, yes, we were surprising my dad. Um, praise God that he's not just a healer, but he's also a keeper. And we just thank God for him. We wanted to give him a special little presentation if it can play at this time. If not, we'll, we'll hold off. If it's not playing, we can play it later. We gather today to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us, the one who loves us without end. With joyful hearts, let us worship God. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with flute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. And praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not yet. And we're going to go ahead and do our proclamation of faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath, the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thy thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strange in the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness upon all nations, and then shall the end come. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to see others' day. Please forgive us of our sins known and unknown and be with us today as we together to worship to worship ship you and to sing your praises join us in this place and even when we leave here may we not depart for our presence, in your son's name, amen. We stand for opening pledges. Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will take it as a rip to my feet and a life to my past. I will hide these words in my heart that I might not see it against God. Now we will say the Christian flag. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood, united all mankind in service and in love. And now we'll say the mission statement. No, we didn't say that. And now we'll say the mission statement. To provide system, data driven education to equip students with academic excellence and spiritual growth. And now we will say the green. I am a scholar. I am more than just a student. My aims are high and my goals are lofty. My destiny is designed for greatness. I will strive by the grace of God to do my best to honor him and to fulfill his purpose on my life because I am a scholar. I am a masterpiece. Good morning, everyone. 
It is good to be here on this blessed day. And it is the Sabbath day of the Lord. We thank God for each of you and for being present here uh, this morning uh, on this special day, Christian Education Day. And we are thanking God uh, for uh, Bethany Christian Academy. Would you say amen? amen? Oh, that sounded like a few of you. Would you say amen? And I want to encourage uh, our, our young scholars today. We thank God for them being present with us today as well. We also have a special guest with us today. Uh, we have our mayor of uh, the capital city here in Montgomery, uh, Mayor Reed. I want to invite you to come at this time. Uh, he has some remarks he'd like to share with us. Thank us. Welcome our mayor, Mayor Reed. Good morning. It's good to be back with you uh, again, and I certainly want to Thank the young people for leading us so far. Thank you so much. Uh, to Dr. Batten, I want to say thank you for the invitation. Uh, I want to thank everyone in this church uh, for the work that you do, uh, not just here, but in our community and in our city. And I realize that today is a uh, very special day. And, and so I wanted to just be very brief in my welcome uh, because we've been to uh, three events already. Uh, this morning, and we've got a, another two or three, I think, to go. So um, but one is very, very important. I think it ties into uh, this Christian Education Day. We're having a uh, community violence intervention summit at the embassy suites with the mayor of Selma, James Perkins. And it started on yesterday, and we had a great turnout. But today is the day I'm really interested to get there because the young people are going to be speaking today. And yesterday, us old folks got a chance to talk and uh, pontificate and theorize what we need to do. But today, we get to hear from those who are right in it. Uh, and I'm really, really interested to hear from those who we're trying to help from their vantage point and their viewpoint. And when we look at some of the challenges in our community, it ties back to education. Uh, many, many of the challenges that we see, not just in Montgomery and Selma, but throughout this region and our state tied to education. So a reminder of Proverbs 22, 6, which says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And what you all are doing here today is just that. You're training the children each and every day at Bethany Academy. You're training them here on the Sabbath to do things that are right by God. And those are the things that we have to make sure we do each and every day. And we have to pour into our young people. I'm on the board at Valiant Cross Academy, a Christian-based all-boys school. And we have great scholars there who go on to the service and to serve this nation and our armed forces who go on to college, who go on to the workforce. And one of the things that the head of school, Anthony Brock, there talks about is pouring into young people. And we cannot start early enough in doing that. And we're trying to do that from the city perspective, but no one can do it like the church. And I think it's so important that we do those things and we keep that in mind. So I want to just say very, very briefly to our young people here today and those that may be watching, something that a good friend of mine John Hope Bryant likes to say, whether you believe I can or whether you believe I can't, you're right. <laughs> so whether you believe I can or you believe I can't, you're right. Your mindset will determine what it is you can and cannot do. And if you're grounded in Jesus Christ, if you're grounded in the word, then there should never be something that you say you can't do. And so when we think about this education and we think about pouring into young people, I want you to think about what you can do. Now, for those who may not be as scripturally oriented, who may be more hip hop oriented, then I'm going to say we refer to the prophet called Nas, who said, I know I can be what I want to be. 
I know I can be what I want to be. And so if you think about what you can do, if we pour into these young people what they can do, what they can be, there are no limits. There are no shackles. There are no chains. It is limitless in terms of what your possibility is. And so I believe today that we are here uh, with a future mayor in this audience, a governor, a senator, an oncologist, an epidemiologist, a software engineer, an innovator, and creator. I believe that all of those are right here at Bethany today. So I want us to think about not just what society tells us you should be or you can be, not just what TikTok tells you you can be or you should be. I want you to think about who God has called you to be. And if we do that and we do our part as adults, then we won't have to worry about the next generation because they will not only look out for us, they will take care of us, and they will go further than any of us have been. And I believe those of us who are in this space right now, our mission should be to make sure they go farther than we have gone. And so we just have to pour into them and make sure that we are setting the foundation and we are laying the opportunity, whether we're in government, whether we're in the church, or whether we're in the community, whatever it may be, to make sure these young people have everything they need in order to become what God has called them to be. And so I thank you for the work that you continue to do. I thank you for the ministry uh, that you have, and I thank you for training these children up in the way that they should go. And anything that we can do from City Hall, you let us know. Dr. Bratton told us he's been having some issues getting through to my office. We got that fixed yesterday. So where you need us, we'll be there and we'll make sure that not only the phone call is returned, but that action is taken wherever it can be done. So thank you all so much. And keep these young people at the forefront of everything that we do, and we will be all right. Thank you so much. I want to thank again uh, Mayor Reed for stopping by and encouraging our young people. Let's give him another hand, everybody. Thank you so very much. Greatly appreciate it. We're thankful uh, for you taking the time to stop by and be with us today. Uh, I was with uh, the mayor and the group there at the summit on yesterday. Uh, it was a powerful experience, uh, and I was was not able to be there today because I'm here to be with all of you uh, and to worship together on today. We want to encourage us to remember uh, those activities, that community violence intervention activity. Uh, there are some things that I think are going to be coming down the pike later uh, as it relates uh, to violence in intervention here in the city of Montgomery. So we are We'll be praying in that regard as well. So this morning, as we just share, I'm not going to share that my normal information as it relates to uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation. They may have it up front, but I don't have the clicker here, so I'm not going to try to go through that full uh, detail, except to say, if you want to follow me upstairs, that's fine. Um, we are remembering First Chronicles 4, Verse 9, as it talks about the, the prayer of Jabez, and we're recognizing that God answered his prayers. God was able to give him greater. God was able to pour into his life. And so we want to do the same here at Bethany as we are going greater, not only in our congregation, but for Bethany Christian Academy. Would you say amen? So we want to encourage our, our families to continue to uh, study in, through the SOAP method, scripture, observation, 
application and prayer. We're in the book of John, and uh, hopefully you were able to receive the information that was, that was shared with you on last time. There are several chapter verses that are there. We want to be uh, to encourage your family to study together, to read the Word of God together and pray together, and take notes uh, along the way as you're studying the Word of God. Please also remember that as we move forward, God wants us to be able to do some great things for him. And we are looking forward uh, to greater, a multi-purpose facility. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Amen. And we're asking God to bless us with that. And so matter of fact, we are planning to have a significant meeting uh, with the building committee on this coming Tuesday, and we will seek to be able to share uh, some more detail in terms of specific approaches that we want to go and want to do so that God's program can be enhanced. Would you say amen to that? Amen. Uh, some are already making donations toward the multi-purpose facility, and if you so desire, you can continue to do so. Uh, just mark it in that fashion on your tithe envelope. The building committee is on Tuesday at 5.30 here at the church. On Monday, however, there is a board session which will be via Zoom. We ask the board members to please be aware, 6.30 uh, on Zoom for our board session on uh, this month. And so we wanna thank you in advance for that. Also on the 27th, uh, Pastor Jesse Wilson, Dr. Jesse Wilson will be with us uh, to communicate some information about small group evangelism. When we are going greater, we are needing to make sure we are hoping to have and garner your support as we study together in our homes and you invite friends and you invite neighbors to study the Word of God together and to go greater in God. And so we're asking you to do that. But please make a point of emphasis on church family and those who are our guests today uh, we want you can be engaged in this particular announcement as well on the 23rd through the 25th a little small little revival if you will 6 15 to 7 p.m just a, a small time to come together to pour out our hearts before the lord and ask god to help us to get in a mindset of greater in a mindset of greater. I'll say it one more time for emphasis. Be in a mindset for greater. In doing so, there may be some ways of thinking that we need to set aside. There may be some relationships that need to be mended. In order for the Holy Ghost to come and guide us to greater, we need to come together and ask the Holy Spirit. I wish someone would hear me right now. Ask God's Spirit to direct us and move us in a way that we can facilitate the growth to greater, to enlarge our territory. So I please, I encourage you to please remember uh, these particular uh, announcements as it relates to these things on today. And as uh, we come together to share, we want to be able to know that these things are uh, important that God will bless us in that fashion. And so this morning, as we continue in our worship service at time today, uh, please be re reminded that we are here because of God's grace and his goodness. How many of you are glad to be here today? How many of you are glad to be alive today? How many of you are glad to be alive today? If you're glad to be here today, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're glad that God is a good God and he's blessed you tremendously, let me hear you say hallelujah. Amen. And with that being said, I want to encourage, just invite uh, uh, our music persons to help us just to welcome each other today. We want to be able to and welcome uh, uh, those who are with us and those who are online. We thank you for being present with us today as well. We want you to know that this is the day the Lord has made, and we can rejoice and be glad.
So I want you to stand with me and stand with our praise team together today as we just share with each other, welcome each other, shake a hand, hug a neck, smile, uh, and let people know that Jesus loves you and he has something great for you. Let's stand together. Say who's on the
Good morning, everybody. Oh, I like the sound of that. Um, I'm asking that if any of the Bethany School Board members, faculty and staff, I'm asking you guys to join me on the stage, please. As they're coming up, we want to take this, this opportunity to honor someone that is dedicated, honor someone that is vo devoted. You know, teaching is not easy. Amen. <laughs> Students do things that could test our patience. Students may be naughty mischievous, disobedient at times, but this individual shows love, they show care, and will always be there to guide students across the right path while edu educating them in various areas. They are next to parents, and the amount of gratitude isn't enough to show how thankful we are for all the work they have done. We cherish the lovely times we've had, for you are the source of the inspiration to step into the world, face challenges beyond, and bring the name and the fame to the school. God has given this individual 27 life-changing years at Bethany Christian Academy. She has been called out of retirement many times, but with a smile on her face and a willing spirit, she comes to our rescue, yes. and we can't say thank you enough. Amen. Amen. She is already up here, but I'm asking if her family could also come join us on the stage as we recognize Miss Lorraine Bussey. This just says, this is the Bethany Christian Academy Appreciation Award presented to Lorraine Bussey for 27 years of commitment and dedication, dedicated service to Bethany Christian Academy presented on April 13th, 2024. to let you know something. <laughs> Principal Hosburn is just like a son to me. <laughs> Amen. And it's been a privilege working with him. But as I look back on all of the years that I spent at Bethany, <clears throat> when I left Oakwood, I asked God to place me where he needed me to be. And sometimes people will ask me why I am still there. Well, <clears throat> God hasn't said leave yet. <laughs> and when he does, I'll go. But it's been a privilege to be able to work and to serve. And all these boys and girls that have come and gone, Sometimes I'll see them, some are lawyers, some are engineers, some are teachers, 
And it just lets me know that God still works with young people. I don't want you to ever forget that the ones who are the worst can sometimes turn out to be the best. So we don't give up on anybody. We discipline and we love. And God does the rest. Thank you so much. Stay right there, Sister Bussy. Family, if you come and gather around mom and, and wife, just want to share. It is indeed a, an honor for us to be able to acknowledge your faithfulness, your dedication uh, to God first, to your family, your church, and the children, the scholars at Bethany Christian Academy. We're wanting just to continue to lift you in prayer. We know that the family has suffered a loss, and you wanted, you were there with your sister in regards to the loss of her husband, your brother-in-law, but you noticed and you knew that there was a special occasion today and you said, I'm going to be here. So even in the midst of, of loss and some pain, she's here because one of her, her scholars, students, will be baptized today. Amen. And so I'm just going to ask congregation if you wouldn't mind just bow your heads with me I just want to share a brief prayer oh God we thank you for the faithfulness of your daughter you have led her you have directed her you have upheld her through many years many trials many situations many students who had many questions. You allowed her to pour into them. And now, God, we are just trying to give a little flower while she's still with us. Grant now, O oh God, your continued mercies upon her, her family, and those that she pours into, whether it be a little child an adult, or an equal. Give her your love, your grace, and your strength. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray that all those who agree with this prayer say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Thank you so very much. Let's give another hand. Amen. I'm going to, as my mother is re returning to her seat, I don't... I shared my mother with all of you for years and she has loved I know all you and she knows she loves you I have learned my dedication and raising of my children all of them are grown now and one is in heaven That if you pour into, pour into, it will return. And I kept asking my mother after years of retirement and coming in and out of retirement, why you keep doing it? 
Well, maybe this song will help you all help me like it did to realize why. future is in our hands. Now's the time to stand. Together we'll pave the way. Those who walk by faith will hold their heads up high. Have the power to change. Change the We know why we are here, and today we are celebrating Christian Academy. And I was here last year about this time to remind you of the fact that we love our academy. Uh, Sister Claiborne has reminded us that this is the 125th year of Montgomery having a church school. 125 years. And I just wanted to, Pastor, if you just give me a minute. How many people in this audience have attended Bethany Christian Academy, Bethany Junior Academy, Bethany School? Would you please stand or raise your hand? Would you please stand if you've attended Bethany Junior Academy, Bethany Christian Academy? If you had a child that attended Bethany Academy, keep standing, keep standing. If you had a child who had attended Bethany Christian Academy or Junior Academy, I'm one of those. We love our school. You may be seated. And so what we'd like to do is, I'm Loretta Rowe, I'm sorry, and I'm one of the board members. And as we did last year, we did the envelope fundraiser. You remember, you remember? We have envelopes that have numbers on them. This one happens to have 50, 100, 20. We're going to be in the lobby after service. I'm going to have the envelopes in the lobby after service. You pick the envelope of the amount that you want to give. If you want to give $20, you grab a 20 envelope, put the money in. You want to bless the school, all funds are going to the school. 
but we'll be out in the lobby right after sab after service sab after Sabbath service. If you don't have it with you today, bring it next week. But please, we love our school. Bethany's been here 125 years, the Bethany School in some shape, form, or fashion. And we want to continue. So please, last year, I want to thank you all. We raised a little short of $4,000. And this year, we want to do even better. So please, I'll be in the lobby right after church. Please stop by the table and see us. only is this a special day for Christian education, but this is a special day as well uh, for the kingdom of God. Today, uh, we have individuals that will be moving in their relationship, their relationship with God. We have three individuals, three scholars from Bethany Christian Academy that are going to be baptized today. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 And we also have uh, some adults who are going to be baptized today as well. Come on, say amen. Oh, you can do better than that. I know that this is, this is a worship experience. And because we worship the God who created us, the God who redeems us, and the God who loves us, we ought to be able to be excited uh, when people turn their lives over to Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 Well, so with that in, with that in mind, we're going to have just a little interlude in our worship service today. I'm going to invite those who are going to be baptized. I'm going to ask you to come and stand here for me uh, and with me. Amen. 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 You need to stand. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Yeah, step over just a little bit. Step over just slide down a little bit, Donovan. There you go. Good job. Amen. We have some individuals here that are going to be baptized today. We're going to just share uh, the baptismal vows with them in a very succinct manner. Uh, and then we will have uh, the um, song. Uh, we'll have the morning hymn as well, but it's probably about a time I get back there and get myself ready. Uh, we'll, we'll be ready for that. So uh, Sister uh, Michelle and others who are going to be helping us with the music, we greatly appreciate that. If you don't mind afterwards, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. So I want to ask you a few questions, and I'm going to ask if you uh, agree with them. And just say yes or I do. Do you believe in the God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And do you believe uh, that Jesus Christ uh, died on cro Calvary's cross to save you from your sins? Do you accept that Jesus Christ uh, has given you a, a, a new heart and you desire by God's grace uh, that you will order your life in obedience to Jesus and his will? Do you accept and understand that the seventh-day Sabbath is a day that God has given to all of us to be able to recognize his creative power and uh, his redemptive power, and that we should honor the Lord by keeping the Sabbath holy? And do you believe uh, that uh, Jesus is in the heavenly sanctuary above and that we can pray to him? And he has promised to bless us and to hear our prayers and that we can know that our prayers are being answered by our heavenly intercessor in Jesus. Do you believe today uh, that uh, God is coming, Jesus Christ is coming soon and that he's coming soon to take us to a place where he will be and we can be with him forever and that place is heaven. 
Do you believe uh, that the Bible teaches about spiritual gifts and that God has given to each one of us a very special gift to be able to help the body of Christ as well as he has given to the church the gift of prophecy? And do you believe that God has given that gift to this church? And do you believe that God has given you your special gift? Amen. And do you believe that God has given the church as a place, as a place to be where things are organized and that things are helpful and that God has placed you in this congregation to be a part of the church and, and to help the church? even with your giving of your tithe and offering and your personal effort. Do you believe and understand that uh, the, the fundamental teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you, do you desire to be a part uh, of this local congregation today subject to baptism? Amen, amen. Uh, and uh, uh, do you recognize that God uh, has given to you the ability to understand his truth about your body, that he wants you to keep your body in good condition. He wants you to make sure you eat those things and, and drink those things that are approved by the scripture and uh, that you should honor him in all things. Amen. And do you believe today that you are going to be baptized and that this baptism is entrance into, if you will, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is a worldwide church, but becoming a member of this local body here at Bethany. Amen, amen. You've heard the individuals today, uh, and is there a motion uh, to receive them into fellowship subject to baptism? It has been moved. Is there a second? All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed, see me after service. All right, so ladies, uh, if you all would, uh, the ladies would go this direction. Ladies, go this direction, Sister Bell. And gentlemen, you follow Deacon Alexander, and I'll be right behind you. And ladies, help us to sing a little bit, and we're going to be uh, go forward to the baptism. Let the church say amen. Amen.
to get ready. Let us please stand for our morning hymn. Rejoice, ye pure in heart.
going to ask that we just bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you will bless this portion of this worship experience. God, we thank you for decisions that hearts have made to join the family of God. Now bless this, we pray, this water and the actions and the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name, amen. First individual is Mr. Donovan. Because you love Jesus and you desire to follow him and be ready when he comes back and baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. because you love Jesus and you want to be ready when Jesus comes, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because you love Jesus, 
and you want to be ready when Jesus comes. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Smith, because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you desire to be ready when Jesus comes, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Sister Green, because you love Jesus and you want to reassure yourself and others that you're following him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Before 
we end this baptismal portion of the service, we definitely want to be able to say, to God be the glory. Amen. And if there are any other persons here, perhaps doesn't have a church home or looking for a church home or looking for a relationship with Jesus, please, you can let us know. We'll be willing to assist you in your walk with Jesus, preparing for a heavenly home. If there's anyone now who would love to say, Brother Preacher, Brother Pastor, I love to prepare my heart for the next baptism. If there's anyone here today, I know this is Christian Education Day, but every day is a day to call people to Jesus. Is anyone here love to be in the next baptism? I see a hand in the back. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. So please make sure that you let someone know. I, I see Elder Abernathy, a hand in the back. If you could just go back toward the back in the mother's room, the gentleman sitting there, make sure you get that individual's information, make sure we are following through. Would the church say amen with that? Anyone else today So we continue in this worship experience on today? Father, we thank you what our eyes have seen and ears have heard. Now bless us as we continue in this worship experience today. In Jesus' name, that all God's people say amen. Amen. amen.
today. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. All right, so it's prayer time, and I'd like to ask anyone and everybody to come down to the front for prayer. And if you don't want to come down, just stand where you are. I just know no matter what mood I'm in or what emotion I'm feeling, there's something about coming down for prayer that just puts me in a better mood. So, you know. The last time I prayed in front of a church was this past September. I prayed during children's story. <laughs> and the last time I prayed in front of a church before then, I was a child myself, most likely being voluntold by my mother. <laughs> So I had to jot down a couple notes <laughs> so that I stay on track. But I'm blessed to be able to be here in church today. It's definitely been a long time coming. But I always pray, you know, Lord, prepare me to be used in the midst of my flaws and all. Father God, help me. So I ask that y'all will bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Because I feel so undeserving, but I can boldly state that I need your love and your mercy and your grace. I feel unworthy even standing here today because I've taken advantage of your love and your mercy and your grace. So I thank you for each and every day you allow me to wake up. It's an opportunity to surrender, an opportunity to right my wrongs, an opportunity to deny my flesh, an opportunity to say less of me and more of you. Because time and time again, Father, I need help to get through, through that narrow gate, because those who find it are few, Father God, help us. And I speak for nobody but myself, but I know it's somebody here that can relate. And the word today is educate, to give intellectual, moral, and social instruction to someone, especially a child, Father God, your child, because they all belong to you. And even though they had to grow up in a secular world, we pray for their Christian education. Not just in a Christian school or a Christian church, but at home because that's where we set the foundation. So educate us as well, Lord, because somewhere something is lacking. I pray for our children because somewhere we are lacking and we're failing our children. So I pray that we don't come to church just to be entertained, but to be educated. And I pray that you don't just allow us to have Christian educators, but give us Christian educators. Because it's more than just the title, it's about application. Father God, teach us application. 
Don't let us be hypocrites. Don't let us be foolish. And God forbid we keep having to learn the hard way, Father God. The word is application. The act of putting to a special use a purpose. The word is purpose. The reason for which something exists or is done, made, used, etc. Father God, let us be more intentional on in praying for the specific purpose you have in our lives. Something we have to unlearn and relearn because we're so set in our ways. Sometimes our children have to unlearn and relearn because we've led them astray. Teach us, Lord, at every age and educate us at every age. And don't let us be naive because then we have to apply what we've learned. It's all about seeking purpose and it's ultimately about our salvation. Lord, we need help. And I usually just speak for myself, but I know it's somebody here that can relate. So Lord, I pray for Christian education in a way you intended it to be known and understood. And I pray for a heart posture, less of me and more of you. Lord, I pray for your spirit as we listen to your word. Be a reminder to us that it's about application. And so I pray for an open heart, less of me and more of you. Lord, I prayed and I pleaded and I begged and I've cried that you free me from myself. And so I pray that you mold my heart, less of me and more of you. Lord, I pray for my children's salvation because I felt all hope was gone for me. My faith accepted. And so you gave me a new heart, less of me and more of you. But Lord, I still pray for deliverance because I still struggle to be pure and holy and sober and humble and patient and still and faithful and righteous, just to name a few. And I ask that you don't let my heart be hardened. Less of me and more of you, Father, forgive me. I can't speak for nobody else, but I know somebody here can relate. And so I pray for this church, the things we prioritize in our personal lives as well as in this church. Does it bring glory to you? less of us and more of you. I pray for this church that your spirit be our conscience and a reminder that there is no room for pride in heaven. Let us humble ourselves before you have us walking around like King Nebuchadnezzar, Lord, less of us and more of you. Lord, I pray you put a weight on our hearts to educate ourselves through your word, less of us and more of you. Help us to think less of ourselves so that we can apply and live by your instruction and lead us to the purpose you have for our lives. Lord, I pray that no matter how many times we fall, you give us the strength to make our way back to you and help us to fall less and less, Lord, because I can't speak for nobody else, but I keep falling and I keep falling and I keep falling, but my desire to be saved does not change. I even fear letting my kids get baptized today because I don't want them to be like me where I've been baptized time and time again and I feel like each time I'm the worst of sinners, Lord, but here I am again and again and again. So deliver me from myself and deliver us from ourselves and deliver Bethany from the church, Father God. My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is my strength and the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So I thank you, Jesus, for being the greatest teacher and the greatest educator. And I pray our prayers do not go in vain. I pray the prayers of our loved ones who died in Christ do not go in vain. Lord, even though we stand here today and the prayers that are gone in the grave with our loved ones, Lord, please don't let them go in vain. So I thank you for the Sabbath, and I thank you for everyone here. And this is my prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
please stand for the scripture reading. Today's scripture will be taken from Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. I will read in your hearing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. You may be seated. Dr. Toussaint Williams has devoted his life to following God in service to others. He is joined on his journey by his high school crush, Dr. Lakeisha Williams. Together, they have two amazing boys, Eleazar and Gariah. They have been married for 20 years and have been blessed to travel across the globe, sharing their faith experiences with others. Dr. Williams has served in a number of cities and in numerous capacities. During his ministry tenure, he began his service in Kentucky, followed by Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. He returned to his high school, Alma Mater, Pine Forge Academy, where he served as religion instructor and chaplain. At God's direction, he resumed his pastoral journey at his undergrad alma mater, serving as an associate pastor at the Oakwood University Church, where he served for nearly 10 years. Presently, Dr. Williams has the privilege of serving as vice president slash executive secretary of the South Central Conference and he also teaches classes in religion and theology in the adult and continuing education departments of Oakwood University. As a long life learner, he has earned a PhD in character education, a master of divinity, and an MBA in finance. While he enjoys scholarships, his real passion lies in helping fellow travelers identify and sharpen their gifts for a kingdom use. He looks forward to walking alongside fellow Christians and partnering with them in ministry. Just, just really quick, um, we are gonna ask Dr. Toussaint Williams to come up, please. On behalf of the Bethany faculty and staff and the students, along with the school board, we just want to thank you for answering the call that God has placed on your life. And we cannot wait to hear what God has, has ordained you to speak to us about. So we just wanted to give you a little Bethany swag. So when you walk around and you walk around the conference office and preach at other churches, we hope that you will wear uh, what's in that bag. And after a musical selection from our choir, the next voice that you will hear is none other than Dr. Toussaint Williams. Hear ye him. Thank you. 
let's again affirm our young people. They're doing a phenomenal job. Took me back to my days in dynamic praise. A better day after a while. It's crazy because I was just looking at my calendar and last year this time I was standing serving as your interim pastor and we were praying how the Lord's going to fill Elder Watson's shoes. Some were nervous because we did not know, like many of us usually don't know what God was going to do, but little did we know he was preparing a young man and a young woman in Florida and Lord brought us pastor and sister back and we are so thankful for what God has done. And he continues to do. And so, Pastor Back, we just want to say thank you for all that you're doing. We're glad to have you back. Um, it's exciting to know that God is doing great things. Because this year, we're talking about greater. We're talking about what? I, that's the theme. We believe that God's going to do some great things. And so we're going to believe God to do um, special things in our lives as he expands our territory. Um, I'm just, listen, I'm excited, ecstatic to be back home. Come on, somebody say amen. Um, this was... You know, you have different, you have different churches in your, your pastorate, and this is probably one of the best um, places I've been. I can't, I'm online, but I mean, I love all the other places I've been, but there's something special here in Montgomery, the capital city, and um, the way you guys love um, is something special. Um, and traveling quite a bit throughout the conference, you know, Alabama, a conference is Alabama, Mississippi, T Tennessee, Kentucky, and the northwest part of Florida. It's always interesting to go different places and to see people that you've known for a long time, and that's always special. But what's also even more special to me is to see people I don't know. And what that simply means is that you're growing, that there are things that are happening here. We just want to thank God for what he's done and how you're continually working and moving and expanding the kingdom of God. And so we're excited about that. I um, want to say thank you to Principal Ogburn. You are doing a great job. I want to affirm you. We thank you for this invitation as a young black man to lead um, in education as a principal um, is very rare. And so we just want to say thank you for your affirmation and your work. Um, if I could just do something real quick as the young people come in, if I can just take aside from my notes and just acknowledge Miss Michaela Monroe. Um, I remember when you came, um, you were sitting right back over there, um, came in very quiet, you kids, they sat like right next to you. Um, and to see it a year later, to see you're leading and not just leading, but leading in it from a vulnerable place. Um, and sharing the gifts that God has given you. Um, I joked in the past, I said, listen, we're looking, always looking for good pastors, so you never know what God does. We know you're serving in the military, and we thank you so much for that, but also using your gifts makes a huge difference for the body of God and the family of God. Thank you so much for that. For our school board chair, our faculty, staff, and most importantly, our students, we're so excited to um, honor you all today. Um, again, this is always a special experience working with our young people. Um, I know some of you are disappointed because you saw me, hey, how are you doing? Where's your wife? <laughs> Unfortunately, my wife is singing um, in California. She's, um, she's ministering there with um, some of the members of her group. And so just continue to keep her in prayer. We're trying to text. She's two hours behind, so trying to check text and make sure she's okay. But she's excited uh, being, about being there, but disappointed about not being here with us. Um, but I did get opportunity to grab one of my other family members, my youngest son, Uriah. I'm going to ask him to stand at this time. Um, he is... He's been my road dog as we travel. Thank you so much. He is a going to be a, he's a freshman in high school, so excited about his journey and matriculation. Um, he's our resident genius, so anything we need to know, he is the one that makes sure that we are all taken care of. Um, with that being said, uh, let's bow our heads and let's spend some time um, together in the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we are living in the last days of earth's history and that you are about to pour out your spirit on all flesh and Lord we just want to say like the prayer was said earlier more of you and less of us so guide our hearts our minds direct our attention to your will and your word in Jesus name we pray amen amen to our school board faculty and staff we want to say thank you to all of our young people what are what are young people if you if you attended if you're attending the uh elementary right now i mean bethany just raise your hand real quick i just want to see where you where you were all the bethany those i know you left if you're where are our young people that attended bethany just wave your hand real quick just want to make sure i see who i'm talking to all right they told me that now it goes up to k to eight correct all right so i have a k8 message that i believe that can touch everybody 
All right, so we're going to work together today, but I need your attention. I need to make sure that you're... I, I also recognize... Tell me your name. Say it again. Shakiria. Okay. And your name, sir? Gregory, you did a great job. Introduction. Phenomenal, phenomenal job. All right, Gregory. All right, so I could president. You meant the, um, the mayor came earlier and said we have a future doctor and a physician. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? Don't know yet? You want to be like Pastor Batten? You want to be a pastor? <laughs> Why they laugh like, oh, dog, you know, anywhere. <laughs> well, something, something, we believe God's going to do some special things. We're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, if you have your device, grab, the, grab it, go in with me. If you haven't, I'll give you a couple seconds to download it. Daniel chapter 5, and Daniel has some unique lessons we are going to learn from it today, and we're not going to spend it. I'm sorry, tell me what I'm going to say, sir. Gregory, all right, Greg, do you have your phone? You got one? All right, pull it out, brother. Come here, Gregory. Come on. Help me out here. Look at you. This should be sitting, sitting up front. All right. All right. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 5, if I can find it. Now, Gregory, what year are you? What, what, what grade are you in? I'm in seventh. Seventh grade. How old are you? Uh, 13. Uh, 13. You sure? Okay. All right. Verse this. All right. So I just need you to read a couple, one verse for me, all right? All right. I'm going to try and see how, see how well this is. Now, Daniel chapter 5 and verse number 1. All right, try and say that first name. Belshazzar. All right, good, all right. Belshazzar. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. All right, freeze real quick. So Belshazzar made a great feast. Made a great what? All right, and he made it for a whole lot of people. Do you remember how many? A thousand. All right, so we identify here. We're in the, so what's, what's, help me out here. No, just... <laughs> I'm going to need you in a couple years, bro. Also, I need you to help me out. All right, so Belshazzar is making a great feast. Now, what's another name for a great feast for a thousand people? The, the dinner? It, no, my man said a dinner. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, what's another word? All right. Party. Party. Okay, another bank. Any, another one? Banquet. A banquet. Okay, you can hear it very well. All right, good. Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> All right, so we have a party, a banquet, some type of feast that Belshazzar is having. Now, I like this story because it talks about a very interesting thing, this thing called a party. Anybody ever been to a party before? Somebody say, oh, yes. Okay, so let me see if we can do this. How many of you, what is, what is a reason somebody would have a party? Okay, one at a time. All my, this is K through 8, okay, all right, all my old people, hush. All right, one reason somebody would have a party. Somebody's birthday, you ever had a birthday party? Matter of fact, let's have a birthday over here, don't we? Is this your birthday? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Turn to 27. Look at you, cute self. All right, so we have one thing, a birthday. What's another reason when somebody would have a party? And it's an anniversary. Boy, you're getting them both in. They said, just in case. All right, all right birthday, anniversary. Another reason somebody would have a party? Okay, uh, Wedding. You're too young to talk about retirement. Retirement, first year teaching, retirement, I'm ready to go. All right, so I have a wedding, birth, anybody else? I'm looking for about seven reasons. Graduation, one that's not been said yet. In the back, yes, ma'am, with the pigtails. A holiday, Get like what kind of holiday? Juneteenth? Okay, Juneteenth. Okay, holiday, another holiday party, another reason I might have a party? Bar mitzvah, okay, all right, yes. All right, if any of us are Jewish in here, God bless you. Another reason somebody would have a party. Oh, a wedding, yes, ma'am. A baby shower, all right, okay, that's a good reason to have a party. Any other reason somebody else have a party? You have a hand up, sis? Housewarming, all right, you have a house? You about to buy you one? Or you? Okay, okay, house party. All right, so is any other, one more reason. Any other reason somebody would have a party? Baptism, amen. amen. Are anyone we're missing? Any other reason somebody else have a party? Say what? You said braces. Oh, Christmas. Okay, Christmas party. All right, now let me ask you another question. Who do you invite to your party? You say who? Whoever you want, if I'm paying for it. <laughs> Why we always got to be extra? Whoever you want. <laughs> Friends, All right, anybody else? And the other reason, who would you invite to the party? You say who? Family? Anybody else over here? Who do you, sister, who do you, who do you invite to the party? Cousins. All right, Pookie, right, right now. All right, yes. All right, anybody else? Who, who do you invite to the party, sir? You say what? 
Neighbors, all right, neighbors. Anybody else is missing to the party? Coworkers? So, <laughs> somebody said, it's a person who brings the best gift. Now, I'm interested. Nobody said the pastor. They're not inviting the pastor to the party. <laughs> all right, one more question for you. You've got types of parties. Who do you invite to the party? What do you do at your party? <laughs> Sis, what you say? You say what? You eat, all right? We throw a party and eat. Anything else you do at the party? Somebody. <laughs> so <laughs> we dance, all right? Okay. All right, we dance at the party. Anything else? Anything else to do at the party? P play games, fellowship, all right, good spiritual word. Fellowship at the party. Anything else we're doing at the party? Somebody said you got to eat, all right? Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? I like you. Yes, ma'am. Have fun with your family and your friends. All right, I, I love all the reasons for party. In fact, I love party. In fact, I will come down for your party. So anytime anyway, you have a party in, in Montgomery, just let me know, and I will be here to make sure that we spend time. Because y'all like, but well, we have to come with Pastor Batten, all right? We got to make sure he's invited to the party. He has to be invited to the party. What I love about this story, this story talks about a party, but this party was a little bit different. In fact, this party wasn't a baptism, this party wasn't a bar mitzvah, this party wasn't an anniversary, this party wasn't because somebody graduated. This party actually happened because somebody got beat up. How do you celebrate getting beat up? Like now, Greg, I know you've never been into a fight before, you never caused any problems at school, but have you anybody heard anybody, let's just say, you're watching scroll on TikTok or something, and you saw somebody. Have you ever seen, like, what happens to the people that lose fights? They what? They get picked on. But in this situation, it's actually really weird that instead of getting picked on, Belshazzar said, I'm going to throw a party. And he throws this party for thousands of people, and he has a whole lot of food, there's a lot of dancing, and it's actually very interesting, but he throws this party, the reason why he throws this party is actually interesting in the story of Daniel, because throughout the story of Daniel, what God is trying to do is put his people in position so that the rest of the world can know who God is. Like he's literally putting people in place, and how, again, you say, how old are you, sir? 13, Daniel was about your age when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came and snatched him out of his family and he took him for, a, and he had him walk for a thousand miles as a slave. And you know what the Bible says? In the midst of all of that, God was with him. And God strategically placed Daniel because he was intelligent like you and smart like you. And tell me, tell me your name again, sis. Shakira. So Shakira or Shakira? Shakira. I want to make sure I'm right. right. So what God would do, what God did is he had Daniel go by himself. His friends, just like, are you in seventh grade too? Eighth grade? Okay, so like, you know, family, friends? Okay, brother, sister, makes sense. Okay. So what God did is had these folks together, his friends, boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and God placed them in a specific situation so that everybody could know there's something special about these two. And so what would happen is there would be danger and challenges. And when every time somebody came to a situation, they would say, hey, what's, how can we figure this out? And God would send Daniel, and Daniel would tell the rest of the world, and the rest of the folks would know, wait a second, there's something about this God. There's something about Gregory and Shakira that they learn that's different from everybody else. They learn to apply themselves at a young age, around your age, and when they got old like the pastor... <laughs> They were actually really wise. And at this point in Daniel chapter 5, Daniel was 84 years old. But all this wisdom he had. And so, so it's interesting now at this story because Belshazzar was the king of Babylon, which was like the United States at that time. He, like they knew everybody. Everybody knew Babylon. And what I want to learn from this particular story is that this party, what I want to learn is it's not just an ordinary party, and I'm going to see if my clicker works. This party I want to call, we're going to, if we have to take lessons from this, it's called Lessons from a Poopy Party. Poopy Party. P-O-O-P-Y. Is, is this working? All right, there we go. Lessons from a Poopy Party. Here we go. The Bible says this. If I can get this, if y'all just follow on me, let's go keep on. We'll, I'll, I'll start over here. Can you guys advance it from the top back there? 
Keep going. Daniel chapter 3, looking for the statue, story of the statue. In Daniel chapter 3, God tells Babylon, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, that there's a statue where he has a head of gold, a chest of silver, legs of bronze, I mean, thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and iron mixed with clay. And all of those kingdoms, all of those images represented a kingdom. Represented what? And each one of those kingdoms where the next kingdom is going to come after them, and ultimately that stone that comes at the ground is going to be God's kingdom that's going to destroy all kingdoms, and he's going to be the one that's going to be in charge of every kingdom. Ultimately, that's when heaven comes. Make sense? Well, Babylon was the head of gold. Babylon's the head of what? In Daniel chapter 5, this story is almost over. That first part is almost over. And you know why? Because the king, do you remember his name? What's his name? No, that's his, uncle, his, grand, his grandfather. What's the king's name you just read? It starts with a B. Babylon. Close. Belshazzar. Stay with your sister. She's going to take you out. She'll help you out. <laughs> Belshazzar was the king, but would you know the reason why he threw this party? Because he didn't listen. Now, I know in your school, y'all never have kids that, never, that don't listen. I know you never get in trouble, but have you ever known, y'all, y'all know that there's all that one bad kid in class? Were y'all that bad kid in class? It's interesting because what God was trying to do through Belshazzar was to actually save his family. And the unique thing about this particular story, and the reason why this story is so, is so challenging, is because he didn't learn the lessons that God was trying to send through his family. Okay, let me say it a different way. Some of us have people in our family that have issues. And if it's not the person to the left, if it's not the person to the right, It might be you. But all of us have issues in our family. The challenge is with many of our families that we try to hide those issues instead of dealing with them. And that's where we get this term called generational curses. And that's where because my dad was an alcoholic, I just hang around alcohol, but I don't say I'm going to drink until I find myself doing some things I have no business doing. Because my family wasn't together, I didn't grow up with a family that was together, well, then I do things that don't elicit connecting with other people so I can have kids everywhere. And what's happening, family, in what God was trying to do through, de- through this particular story, what God's trying to do through each and every one of us, he wants us to learn the lessons of people that went before us. And so if we don't talk to our kids about the mess God has taken us through. Okay, in other places in the conference, not in Montgomery, people come to church and they act real spiritual as if they did not have a past. We talk to kids who are in high school or young adults as if we were never in those shoes. The only reason people don't know is because there was not a Facebook or a TikTok or Instagram back then. In fact, when there were some documentaries about things that happened in Atlanta, people were like, (laughs) my son was like, Dad, were you a part of that? I was like, no, I wasn't a part of that documentary. Some of y'all laughing know what I'm talking about. (laughs) But the challenge here, family, real talk, is that we, especially in our African-American community, we will hide things under the rug as if it never happened and wonder why kids have issues and challenges. And family, the reason why God allows us to go through things like this so that as a family, we can go through these particular things together. So in Daniel chapter 5, this focus is now not just God trying to save the world, not just trying to save a nation. God is now trying to save an individual. And what I find very interesting is then and even now, God will put us in situations that literally cause us to wonder, what in the world is God doing? Have you been there? 
Maybe it's a, a diagnosis where you're trying to figure out, God, what is happening? Maybe it's a relationship where you just thought was going to be strong, and all of a sudden things just kind of the bottom falls out. There may be school issues or challenges, but there's sometimes God will allow us to go through things where we are literally almost all, literally almost on our back, just on, and the only thing we can do is look up and say, God, what is happening? And that, my friends, is a pivotal moment in our experience to determine our outcome and where we're going to do as we move forward. And so in Daniel chapter 5, when Belshazzar, the Bible says in verse number 5 and verse number 2, the Bible says, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine and going back to the party, commanded to bring the gold and the silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and the concubines might drink therein. What Nebuchadnezzar was saying, the music was good and the dancing was fine, but he said, let's take this up a notch. Not only am I the one in charge on earth, but what he's doing now is he shifts his gauge to say, not only am I in charge on earth, but I'm also in charge of things that happen in heaven. You see, the unique thing about this story is Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar is now celebrating a battle that he did not fight. He was a little boy. Matter of fact, some scholars say he was not even born when this thing happened. But he calls out and says, we're going to get the gold, the, the goblets of gold and silver of the unknown God, the God that we don't worship, because I want everybody to know that I'm the one in charge. Now, we haven't gotten to the place where we're actually going out and, and, and putting our hands in front of the nose of God and saying, God, I'm in charge. But do we have a little bit of Babylon in all of us? The danger to where we feel like we can do what we want, when we want, where we want, and there will be no repercussions. And the unique thing about this, the Bible lets us know, is that Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar wanted his grandfather's victory but received his father's consequences. What should have happened in in Daniel chapter 1 where Nebuchadnezzar was completely destroyed, God kept him because he found out who God was. And here's the challenge, family. Some of us have not received the consequences that we know we should have received. Some of us know we should have been out of our minds. Some of us know we shouldn't have be, be, be sane. Some of us know we shouldn't have a job. Some of us know we shouldn't have a car. Our credit should be bad. But it was not the grace of God that intervened in our lives. Things would be completely crazy. The only thing worse than receiving God's grace is acting like it never happened in the first place. So verse number three says this. So they brought in the golden goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles and his wives and the concubines drank from them. And they drank and praised, watch this now, the gods of gold and silver and of bronze and iron of wood and of stone. He begins to worship the gods that God himself created and said would ultimately be destroyed. And then the Bible says, suddenly, fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched in the hands watched the hand as it wrote and the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another one version says he was so afraid he emptied himself literally defecated in his pants he pooped his pants And one of the things I learned in this particular story is that this poopy party, one that was initially designed to show his strength, actually showed his weakness. What do you do when God finally recognize, you finally realize you're no match for God? Where do you turn when all of your business gets put on front street? What happens? And and many of us have been there where we don't necessarily defecate ourselves, but we find ourselves in all kind of mess and drama and trying to figure out, Lord, how did I get here? And this is what happens, family, because when he had an opportunity to be in school like you guys, he was playing games. 
And what happens here, and I'm, because y'all sitting here, I'm just talking to y'all like they're not here. What happens is if you don't learn to make wise decisions in seventh and eighth grade, when you get to college, when you get to start on your master's degree, the issues that you don't learn then impact you now. I was never a good study person. I was like kind of really smart. And so what would happen is I wouldn't study. I would just kind of go in and take the test. And it worked in eighth grade and ninth grade and 10th grade. But when I got to college, I would fail classes I thought I would pass because when I was your age, Greg, I never took the time to listen to what my teachers were saying. And what happens was, the harder it was, the, the different classes I went to, the harder it was for me to learn exactly how to understand what was happening. And what I want to make sure we understand at this age is that when you are, and tell me your name, sir. Caleb, how, how, what grade are you in? Eighth grade. So what happens in eighth grade will impact you when you get to high school. And if you learn what you need to learn in eighth grade, ninth grade won't be a problem. And what I want to make sure you understand is when you look at this particular story, is that in this story, if, if Belshazzar at eight, when he was young was paying attention instead of playing games, instead of trying to holler, at, I mean, I'm sorry, trying to talk to, y'all, <laughs> can you just help me out real quick? Now, let's just say there was somebody that you like. Do y'all still write the, do you like me, yes or no, check, check box? No. What do y'all, what do you, how, does, how does it work now? I'm, I've been out the game for a little while. You don't. You're about studies. You're about studies. I see you. All right. <laughs> I'm all in the books. I'm not even worried about that. But what I love about this story is that, again, family, there are certain lessons we have to learn at a young age that will impact us once we get older. Number one, I want to make sure you understand. Go back to the other slide that was just up with the young child on the stairs. That you have to, you can make the same mistakes that your parents have. Those of us who graduated eighth grade, ninth grade, and high school and, and out of school, if you look back at your mistakes, did you do the same thing your uncle did? Do you find yourself doing some of the same challenges you thought were open? Yeah, listen, and, and again, I just want to affirm what you said. She, she said when, in, in her prayer, I don't know if you said, she's like, I make the same mistakes over and over again. Like, and, and my thing is, I, make, I, I, I call my dad, and if those of you have parents, take time to talk to him. And I just ask sometimes, like, Dad, what was some of the stuff you had to deal with as a parent with my brothers? Because you didn't have any issues with me. <laughs> like, no, for real. I was, I was just that kid. I was like, amazing. They, they, don't, they don't always say that to me, but I know that's what they're trying to say. But it's interesting, even as a parent, that if you're not careful, you can make the same mistakes your parents did. But what I love about the story is that God gives us warnings, and that's why the text this morning, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own. And family, what that means is you're not smart enough to know what you got to deal with. Like, you're cute, you really are, you, you, you look really good, your hair is nice, your shoes, great, but you're not that smart. And what we have to do on a regular basis is saying, God, what do you have for me to learn today? God, lead me and guide me on a regular basis so that I can be in your will and in understand exactly what you have for us. And so what God wanted to make sure that they understood, and I want to make sure we understand the same lesson as well. Go back one time, please. It says this. God warned them that their kingdom would not last forever. What I want to make sure you understand is that your business is not going to last forever. Your house will not be around forever. The only thing that we will take to the kingdom are our characters. And if we spend more time on trying to make a li living and not trying to understand life, we're going to miss out on the very thing Christ died for. And it will be a challenge for us to spend all this money putting kids in Christian education and kids and folks from Bethany be lost because we were so focused on trying to make our earthly things work. And so the first thing we have to understand is that this world is not our home. 
like for real, this world is not our home. God has prepared a place for each and every one of us. And on a daily basis, we have to get to the place we're saying, Lord, not our will, but thy will be done. Notice what the Bible says in this particular verse. It says, when the queen reasoned, Nebuchadnezzar was, I mean, Belshazzar was shaking in his boots, pants were soiled. The Bible says this. Now the queen, by reason of the world and the king um, and his lords, came to the banquet house, and the queen spoke and said this. And isn't it funny? And this is just, let me just, this is a side, and I know my wife's not here, but I have to admit this. There's something, like, women are just, like, smart. Like, <laughs> It took me 20 years, but I, I, got, I had to realize, like, 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 there's stuff women know that you just like, it's like, good, right. I've, I've been hearing about, there's some things, like, your mom's still, your mom here? She's not here? Grandma here? Where's grandma? Wave your hand, grandma. I see. Like, 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 listen, you may not understand it, but your grandma's really smart. Like she has wisdom and knows things and has seen things that you've never seen before. Like God has given, I just firmly, God has given women wisdom beyond your, your years. And what happens is because of our hubris, because guys, we think we have this bravado that we can do it in of ourselves, we naturally kind of go out there and, and I'm telling you, like I would probably still have hair if I listened to my wife. <laughs> But this idea of understanding, watch, watch what happens in, in all of this mess. The Bible says this. She comes up. This is grandmother speaking now. Belshazzar's grandmother says this. King, live forever. Let not your thoughts trouble thee, nor thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom of whom wisdom of the spirit of the holy gods. And the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Grandma knew history. Grandma understood what God had been doing for years. And be, while Belshazzar was partying, Grandma understood, wait a second, something ain't right here. Because if you understood a little bit more about history, the, 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 the Medo-Persians, those people that had just beat them in an earlier battle, had surrounded the city, and they were just waiting them out. Belshazzar was partying because he lost early battle. But he said, because our, our walls are so great, we are not going to have any problems. We have a good defense system. We're going to be just right. Matter of fact, let's all drink it up. Let's live and let's play games until God showed up. And in all of our lives, there will be an until. That we will live life and do our thing until life shows up and hits us in the mouth. And we realize there's nothing we can do. Notice what grandma says. She says, um, in the light of the wisdom, which whom thy father talked about, the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king says, thy father made master of the magicians and astrologers, the Chaldeans and soothsayers. Next slide, please. And here's the challenge here. Grandma understood what Nebuchadnezzar didn't, that he knew history. Notice the next slide, Daniel 5, verse 6, 13 and 14 says this. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Thou art Daniel, which art the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewelry. Verse 14, I have even heard of thee. Don't miss that. Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, excuse me, Belshazzar, when all this happened, his mind was jotted. It's like, wait a second. I heard that lesson somewhere before. For a while he feigned like he didn't know the promises that were found in the Bible. He acted like it, but life happened to where he realized, man, I learned this in Pathfinders and Sabbath school. I learned it in choir. Some Mr. Ogburn taught me. There was somewhere in my journey I learned this thing. And the Bible says this, that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that the light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Belshazzar knew, Daniel knew all of this. But my question is, why wouldn't he be around the person who could have helped him in the first place? Do we find ourselves in the most trouble when we're trying to do things by ourselves? And this lesson that I'm learning is that, number one, you can't live life without learning from the lessons people have gone before you. Like in, in Montgomery, there shouldn't be any uneducated black people. Like y'all know what happened in Montgomery. Not just the riverfront situation. 
Y'all remember that. Y'all remember that. In a white chair, we remember that. But actually, before there <laughs> was a very spot where slaves were taken and auctioned down the street. Like, in your city is a place where Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, like, this is where it happened. And, like, if anybody should know that stuff, it should be educated, it should be the people that live here. And family, it's, it's, it's a dangerous thing, especially for us and our people, when we forget how history, how we got here. Because, like my sister said, if you don't learn from history, it will, it will be in danger of repeating yourself. Keep going. Next slide, if you have it up there. This is one of the things I, I'm learning in this story. And this is the writing that was said. This is what God told him. He said, and this was the writing that was written many, many tinkle parson. And this is the interpretation of the thing. God has numbered your kingdom and has finished it. You are weighed 27 in the balances and found wanting. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. God ultimately said, your time is up. But notice the lesson that Daniel says to him as he's speaking. Thou, his son, O Belshazzar, have you not humbled yourself, even though you knew all of this, and have lifted you yourself up against the host of heaven? Next slide, please. Family, what I'm learning in this particular story is that Daniel and Belshazzar, even though he knew all of these things, he said, God, I got it. I can handle it. I can do it all by myself. And God was like, oh, okay, bet. Next slide, the Bible says, and that night Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. He did not know that was going to be his last night. Family, I don't know what and how God is going to work this thing out. My challenge is in this particular story is that this, this thing that God was doing through Belshazzar was trying to get him to see that he was in control that God was in control. Belshazzar had lived his life thinking and doing and being and acting like he had it all under control. And family, he did not listen to his parents. He did not listen to his grandparents. He thought he was cool. He thought he was good. And family, I want to make sure that you understand, especially our young people, that you listen to your parents, even if and when they get on your nerves. Listen, my, my mom is, my dad is 70-something. They're old. Der, older, <laughs> older. <laughs> and they still have wisdom. Like, it's so crazy because I see how God allows life to happen so that we can recognize there's somebody greater than ourselves that we can lean on and get wisdom from. And so when God places godly people in our lives, it behooves us to make these decisions so we can learn and say, God, whatever it is that you have for me, I need to do it. So this is what I want to do. I want to challenge you two ways. Number one, I want to challenge my adults. First, I want to talk to my parents real quick. I want to challenge you to talk to your kids about some of your shortcomings. Sometimes they don't know some of the things we've been through. And when those things appear in their lives, they're wondering, where do these things come from? And it's real difficult and it's embarrassing to tell your kid what you used to do and the places that you could have gone. And, and again, we praise God. There weren't any social media, no, no smartphones back then. But it would free them from recognizing, hey, listen, Dad, if you got through it, if Mom, if you got through it, then, then I can get through it as well. My second challenge is for our young people. I want to challenge you just next time your parents ask you to do something, just do it. Like, I, Greg, you, you are an amazing guy, and I know you don't ever give your grandma any problems. But if for a chance your sister might, <laughs> he's like, yep, it's her. It's always her. That you listen to what God, the individual's got has placed in your heart, in your, your life to do. Like your grandma, Mr. Principal Ogburn, your pastor Batten. Like there's wisdom that they have here. I want to challenge you to do your best in school. Like, like this, this semester, this quarter, I'm going to get all A's this quarter. Like, I'm going to put the Xbox down. I'm going to put the, the, the PlayStation. I'm going to put the phone down. I'm not going to text. 
Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You got three more, couple more weeks left. But but because what happens here is what you when you begin to apply yourself. What I love about the story of Daniel is that God walked beside him and gave him extra ounces of wisdom and knowledge, so that they were smarter. In fact, ten times wiser in the story of Daniel. Matter of fact, what I love about this story is that this is the only party in Daniel that got crashed. Every other time you read the story of Daniel, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, every time these young people stood up for God, they got promotion, and God had a party, and they brought their friends, and everybody got a, got, a, got, a, got, a, got a new job. When you stand for God, sir, what's your name? Ashton. Ashton, when you stand for God, this is your brothers, they're watching you. You're the oldest? And God has given you, Ashton, a level of influence that mom and dad will not have. And that w- because when your brother see you do something, Ashton got away with it. Ashton did it. But when you lead them to do right, yo, that's my big brother. That's my bro. And God will bless you with insight and wisdom that he may not give to them because you're the oldest. What I believe God is trying to do and I'm going to say this. I'm going to call him out. He's probably going to really get mad at me. Anyways, um, Solomon, stand up. Solomon, when I was in Birmingham, his mom had him at Ephesus Academy. And he was, he couldn't have been eight, nine years old. I said long. And now Solomon is a full-grown man. If you're ever in Birmingham, need to get your hair done, suave hands, that's the one, go, go holler at him. But I've watched, you can sit down, I've watched his journey from a young man, probably about, did you see him? This, this man, stand up on time. Listen, bro, they're talking about history. <laughs> trying to help you out. This guy is a for real model, like in magazines, all kind of stuff. Got a, is an author, and he went through the similar same school that you went through. Like some of the books you went through, he's gone through. And that's a full-grown entrepreneur. That means he got money. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, I'm, what I'm saying is, if you got people in your congregation that have done things that you could do, that have gone through some of the same things you're experiencing and are successful. Like, so when you're throwing through Instagram, you got Instagram? Look up Suave Hands and you see that dude right there. S-U-A-V-E-H-A-N-D-S. I need a cut. Sit down for a second. What What I'm saying is there are people that have gone through things that we've gone through and are successful. And family, if we're able to tap into some of those things, and mom, I want to commend you because you've done a phenomenal job in raising this young man. I know it hasn't always been easy. And parents, it's not always easy. Again, I got mine here, and so I understand the journey that you're going through. But what God does in this experience gets us to a place at some point we recognize I can't do it enough myself. And so I want to shout out all of our single parents. In fact, let me affirm them right now. Let's (laughs) clap it up for them doing a phenomenal job. All of our grandmothers and the aunties and uncles that are stepping in and supporting. But what God is doing, family, it will he create situations to where we know ultimately we can't do it in of ourselves. But then also we recognize God has placed individuals strategically in our lives that can assist us making wise decisions, not just for life, but for eternity. Because at the end of the day, that's the goal for us to get to the kingdom. And so I want to challenge us as, as we talk about this and we talked about different types of parties and, and I guess we're, we're good here. One of, the, one of my favorite types of parties is parties where you get gifts. And some of my, my favorite gifts aren't just the ones you can spend, sometimes the ones you can eat. And so I, 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 I want to affirm, man, Gregory, do you, do you eat cookies? All right, so after... After church, <laughs> after church, I want to make sure all of our young people that, that are here, I want to affirm them and say, listen, I want to affirm the fact that the work that you're doing. And God allows and puts things in place for you just because when you show up, God will do great things. You, you didn't know this was going to happen, but you were just faith. Listen, I'm just going to be faithful doing what Prince told me to do. And I, God will provide areas and ways that you never thought possible. And if I can leave you with anything, family, it pays to trust in God. Like, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. But when we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, God will direct 
our past. I'm a witness, seeing God do it a number of times over and over and over and over again. And the Bible is true where it says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither had it entered into the mind of man what God has prepared for his children. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the challenges you place in our lives. I thank you, God, that sometimes you allow the challenge to be so big that we can't call on a friend or a co-worker or a brother or a sister, Lord, that we can call only on you. But your word also says that we can cast our cares on you because you care for us. So right now I'm praying specifically for our young people at Bethany Academy. I'm praying for our young people that are in elementary and high school and, and middle school. I'm praying for those who are still growing and learning, who are impacted by the challenges and things of this world. That Lord, I'm asking that you will put situations in their lives where they recognize that you are their only help. God, I pray a spe special prayer for our teachers and our administrators. God, they have a gargantuan task of trying to lead this generation of students. God, I'm praying that as you give educators grace to wake up every day, that you will give them insight, that you will imbue them with wisdom, God, that you will give them the, 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 the motivations necessary to, to lead these young people in a way that they will say, man, Mr. Mrs. and Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, they came in my life at the right time, and my life ultimately has been changed. God, our prayer is for our lead servant here at Bethany, Pastor Batten and his wife. I pray that you will guide their efforts, that you will bless them. As we're talking about greater this year, I'm praying that you will bless them exponentially. Lord, I'm praying that you will not just do the, the, the Family Life Center, the, the Multi-Education Center, that, Lord, you will do something even greater for them, that you will provide resources from places that they never thought possible simply because you are a God who works miracles. Lord, we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray that the children of God say amen and amen. All of our young people, I want to see you after service so I can make sure I put this over here so other baton doesn't beat me up. But we want to make sure that we have something special for you after church. God bless you. Please be seated for just a moment. Please be seated for just a moment. Before we end today, we just want to make sure that those individual members as well as guests, um, if you would like to help us as the, with the envelopes, you can pick an envelope there and at the in the in the hallway there in the foyer, uh, as Mrs. Rowe will be there, Elder Loretta Rowe will be there with that, as well as we want you to know that. If there, there are individuals here, I know that our guests and our families, for, with, uh, with parents and students, if you are an individual and you would like to have your child to be enrolled uh, in, or someone you know that can be enrolled into Bethany Christian Academy, I'm going to ask that you will see uh, Mr. Ogborn after the service. I'm going to ask him, actually, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, and go out the door, Principal Ogborn, so that those who may want to talk to you, you can see him after the service, 
maybe someone that you know, or a family member, or a relative, or a friend, or a neighbor. Uh, we want to let you know that Beth Bethany Christian Academy is a place where uh, we are moving to greater by God's grace as well. And so we want to be able to help you in, in that regard also. Also, I've been asked that the board members are asking that you would make your way to the fellowship hall as quickly as possible after we are dismissed uh, to help with uh, the uh, serving of uh, the food. Thank you so very kindly. Uh, at this time, as the praise team is singing our exit song, uh, the ushers who are on my right and your left, they will escort you out by row. We'll greatly appreciate your assistance and your cooperations. Thank you so much. God bless you until we meet again. Thank you.